I, 26 female, have been with my husband Caden, 26, for 8 years, and we've been married for 4. We have a toddler together and we're expecting baby number 2. My relationship with Caden's brother and his wife has never been great. She got really weird around me pretty quickly and things soured from there. Caden told me his sister-in-law was jealous that I hit it off so well with his mom and sister, but especially his sister, and that his brother has always kind of followed his wife's lead. His sister-in-law has been around the family since she was a kid, and she and my brother-in-law have been together since high school. She always thought she would be like the second daughter of the family, but sister-in-law and her have always clashed a little and were never tight. Caden has been great about standing up for me when needed, and he shut down his sister-in-law on more than one occasion when she was being rude. One of the things that has resulted from all this is Caden's sister-in-law insisted I will never be her children's aunt. They have specifically been told I am not their aunt and they're not to call me Aunt Emmy. I've been kept at a distance from the kids during family gatherings and generally sister-in-law will ensure I don't interact with her kids. Caden sees them less because he refuses to have me leave our home so they can visit, something his sister-in-law tried to insist on. My relationship with my sister-in-law, Caden's sister, is the best though and we are close. She has a child the same age as mine and she'll come over and we hang out with our toddlers. Since she's here so often, I will often have enough food for both kiddos. She's picked up some inspiration from me on how to introduce food to toddlers since she said her kiddo eats better since they started hanging out with us. She mentioned it at a family dinner recently because her parents commented on how much better her kiddo was eating too and the different plates she used. She said it was all thanks to me and was saying how she really owed me one. Caden's sister-in-law asked why she hangs out with me so much and never spends time with her. It brought up some of the underlying issues simmering around between us. She then asked why I never do that for her kids and why I'm not sharing my vast knowledge with her. Caden jumped in and said she had made her feelings clear about me and has ordered me to stay away from her kids, so how am I supposed to do any of that with her or them? The next day, she asked if the kids could come over for lunch, and I said no. She asked about another day, and I said no again. She then told me I was an idiot and excluded her kids. I told Caden what happened, and he talked to his brother, or more like fought with him. I do feel kind of bad for the kids and would love to get to know them better, but I don't trust their parents in any of this. Am I the idiot for refusing to feed my husband's nieces and nephews? Not the idiot. She's jealous and now wants to hone in on what you and other sister-in-law are doing. I bet if you did have them over, the food wouldn't be right and she'd have all sorts of demands and she would expect your family to pay for it. Or she'd drop them off and disappear for the day. She wants a free babysitter and free food for her kids. Good for you and your husband putting a stop to it even starting. If anything, her family should ask if your kids could come over so you would have a break, being pregnant and all. Caden's sister-in-law insisted I will never be her children's aunt. They have specifically been told I am not their aunt and they are not to call me Aunt Emmy. Wow, now they want to have it both ways, or to put it another way, take advantage of your good nature. This is probably why you get on well with mom and sis, you're a nice person, and they don't seem to like the sister-in-law as much. They see her for what she really is. Yep, I tell her I'd only do it if she FaceTimes with the kids and apologizes for her behavior in front of them and tells them she was wrong to tell them not to call her Aunt Emmy. She'd never do it because her pride wouldn't let her. On the slim chance she did do it, it opens up a whole other door where sister-in-law will forever have to own up to her idiocy. I have a friend Bella who's late 20s and has a toddler and a baby. She constantly laments that the village doesn't exist anymore and people aren't helping her and her partner with their baby the way they used to in past generations. How selfish it is and how terrible society is now. She's bitter her mother won't retire and babysit the kids for free, but her mother is only in her mid-50s and can't afford to retire yet. She constantly complains she can't travel or enjoy her life anymore because she doesn't have a village. After years of this, I told her I was glad we'd moved away from that because the village that parents romanticize was actually the unpaid labor of women. As a woman who doesn't want a child, I'm glad that I'm no longer considered socially obligated to babysit other people's kids for free or do household chores for people who choose to have kids in my free time, especially because these people won't pay it forward to me in any way. If something happened to me, like getting sick and needing help, they'd use their kids as a reason they couldn't help me. I also reminded her that the village depended on women not having jobs, and it's a good thing that women can now sustain themselves and aren't forced into dependency on their fathers or husbands. 
What triggered it was that I went overseas recently for a holiday and to attend a concert of an artist I like and she complained about how she doesn't get to do these things because the village is off doing things like that. She said I'm just a really selfish, child-free person who wants mothers to suffer. But I don't think I was wrong. And then she said I was a bad feminist and a terrible person and hasn't spoken to me since. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. So many things, caring for the sick and disabled community and helping raise children, were unpaid women's labor that relied on us not being able to work. Yes, it's unfair now that women are expected to work and raise children unless the men are doing an equal share. But in this case, it just sounds like your friend wasn't ready for the responsibility of a child. Yikes, your friend just called parenting suffering. Why did she have kids in the first place if this was too much for her? You're 100% right. When you have a kid, it's nice if you have help. But you should never rely on other people to raise your child in your place while you travel and enjoy life. Yeah, I kind of get the impression she thought they'd be cute little accessories she could take everywhere and then dump them on someone else whenever she wants a break, or it would be more fun to do something without them. I really hate how this village proverb is used by parents nowadays because they understand it as a complete one-way street. Village helped with my kids, but my kids and I don't owe anyone anything. That's not the village model. Social obligation goes both ways, and with it, social control and the not-so-great things about close-knit communities. I'm not saying either of you is right or wrong, but if you guys are genuinely friends, why not empathize with her situation and do something nice? For example, you could communicate with the father and ask him if he can take a day to watch the kid while you two spend a day doing something fun. This helps her feel like there is a village and you don't have to babysit but have some time with a friend. Yeah, everyone's the idiot here. It probably shouldn't be on you to initiate this, but maybe she just needs a little love. I, 29 female, am getting married next May to my boyfriend of 11 years, 29. We've been engaged since the birth of our kid a few years ago. Due to a number of circumstances, chiefly finances, we have had a long engagement. I've been friends with Caitlin, 31 female, since grade school, and although we're not best friends, we've had a long and joyful friendship that means a lot to me. I went to Caitlin's wedding with her college sweetheart, which happened before she graduated at 23. Unfortunately, her husband was found in a bathroom stall with his co-worker at the reception. My heart broke for her, and I was part of her support system in the aftermath. She's now happily remarried with two kids of her own. In planning my wedding, the one thing I've been struggling with for years is the dress. My body image is poor and I have an unusually large chest that makes all clothes shopping awful, but I went thrift shopping last week and found THE dress. It was everything I could have dreamed of and it fits me. I literally fell to my knees crying in the dressing room. Right away, I sent a photo to everyone I could think of, including Caitlin. She called me immediately. I didn't see it then, but when I got home, I saw multiple missed calls and texts from Caitlin. So, it's her wedding dress from her marriage to her ex. Apparently, she finally decided to let go of it. Since it was so long ago, I genuinely didn't recognize it. It's also not as if she goes around parading her wedding photos. Once she said it, I remembered right away. It also made sense as one of the things she and I bond over is boob size. I tried to laugh it off, but she said, I'm sure they'll let you return it under the circumstances. I felt sick because she obviously didn't want me to wear the dress and I was already super attached to it. I stopped engaging for the rest of the night and talked it over with my fiancé and some other friends. Opinions are split. Some know how hard this process has been for me and think Caitlin is being petty. Honestly, I don't know. I get where she's coming from, but I literally cannot keep looking. And it was $30. I have a young child. I would love to spend wedding dress money on her instead. Some say it's not only a bad omen, but disrespectful to ask Caitlin to look at me in her dress. In my opinion, Caitlin has moved on and has a family. If the roles were reversed, I'd be thrilled for her. That said, I do understand that I could be the idiot by reminding a friend I do love of one of the worst days of her life. I tried talking to her about it the next day, but she's been firm on not attending my wedding if I wear the dress. She said that she's rethinking the friendship in general. I'm gutted and don't think that's fair. I would love to find a solution that allows me to keep the dress and my friend, which is why I'm posting here. Am I the idiot? What can I do? No idiots here, but I wouldn't want to have anything to do with it. It's got bad energy.
And I'm not one of those crystals and zodiac girls either, but the circumstances surrounding it would be enough for me not to want to be anywhere near it, not even if it were altered to be unrecognizable. Plus, it would hurt your friend terribly. You would be within your rights, technically, but is it worth it? Yeah, this is how I feel. I don't really believe clothes have energy, but considering what happened to the last bride while she was wearing the dress, I would not have any interest in wearing it for my wedding. If it were a random bride, that wouldn't matter to me, but a close friend too. That's like buying the house where your friend's parents were murdered or something. Every object has a past, but it's strange if it's a past connected to you directly. Can you imagine you at your wedding? You get married and then find your new husband cheating on you at the reception. That's got to be about the most painful way to find that out. Then your really good friend gets married and you must look at her in your dress. The dress you suffered through that day. A symbol of being so hurt and so wronged thrown in your face. Then you see that dress all over your social media, in your house and probably on your phone. I completely get her not wanting to attend. You can wear it, but don't expect her to be there, congratulate you or anything else. She may be okay seeing you eventually. You are the idiot, OP. She's made it perfectly clear where she stands, and you're still trying to find a way to get everything you want. You will not be able to keep the dress and the friend. Period. It's up to you which is more important. My brother went to prison for identity theft and forgery when my niece, now 18, was only 7 years old. I raised her from the point. Now that he's out, he's visited us a few times. The first visit was a little bit awkward. I'd asked my niece if she was ready and she said she was, but it was still a little weird. On the second one, it was better. On the third visit, he found out that I had allowed her to do boxing since she was 10 and that she was still taking classes with a personal trainer every week. My brother got upset about it. He said girls shouldn't do boxing and that I'd failed as an uncle. And I was just standing there, stunned for a moment. Then I asked, should I have committed forgery and gotten sent to prison like you? It's your fault you weren't around to make the choices. In hindsight, I realized it was kind of an idiot move for me to say that to someone who just got out, and our mother also called me later that night to say I didn't have to throw that in his face that way. Am I the idiot for reminding my brother that it's his fault he didn't get to raise my niece? Not the idiot. He opted not to be there for her, and it doesn't seem like he tried to do any parenting from behind bars. If he's upset about the past, it's his way of deflecting the blame, and maybe he needed that reminder from you, as harsh as it may have felt. I agree. My stepdad was a sales guy who travelled to his district three weeks every month, and then would come home and start moving stuff around for the five days he was home. My mother finally said, You don't live here. You visit. If you move that chair I sit in and read in the sunlight during breakfast every morning one more time, you won't be visiting either. Let's not forget his extremely misogynistic comment. He should be thrilled his daughter knows how to box. She can protect herself. It's great exercise, keeping her fit, and it's amazing for self-confidence. All of these are things a young woman needs to help her make her way into this world. Yeah, brother is the idiot and always will be. And now mom's the idiot. He's got to live with his own failures, not attack you for your success. Having a daughter who is a trained boxer is amazing, by the way. I'm sure she has great confidence that many of her peers don't have. You failed as an uncle? Well, that's because you were busy being a dad, and your kid, yes, yours, not his, knows it. My husband, 30 male, and I invited my family to stay with us until they could find a new home. Their house burnt down and they became homeless. This was my mom, 51, my dad, 54, and my grandmother, 72. At first, it wasn't a problem. We have the room and everyone besides my grandmother can care for themselves. It did make things a little crowded with five adults, two kids, a toddler and a kindergartner, and our dog, but we managed since it wasn't supposed to be for long. Things spiralled quickly and I ended up having to care for everyone. From the moment I wake up each morning, it's nothing but, OP, can you do this? OP, can you do that? OP, you should do this or that. I don't even have the chance to sit down and eat until everyone's in bed and forget time with just my husband and kids. It got worse a few days ago when we found out our dog was very sick and needed round-the-clock care for a while. The final straw was when my mom complained that the house wasn't clean enough. I sat everyone down and told them I needed a break and I was now expecting everyone to pull their weight around the house. I wasn't asking anyone to do any chores 
just to pick up after themselves and, if they needed something while I was busy, to get it themselves. This started a screaming match with my mom, with her calling me a lazy witch because they were guests. I screamed back that yes, this was my house, but I'm not their servant. My parents are now not speaking to me, and my family is saying I was way out of line for losing it in the way I did because that's my parents. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Kick them out. Parents or not, people who scream at you, abuse your hospitality, and give you the silent treatment do not belong in your home. Give them a warning, but be firm and stick by it, and stop catering to them in the meantime. They should absolutely have chores, and you should not be cooking, cleaning, babysitting these grown damn entitled adults. By the way, they aren't guests. They're using your hospitality because they're homeless. Those are very different things. Wait, do you mean the moment they become guests, they lose the ability to do anything for themselves? That's unique. Most folks visiting, not to mention having a free place to stay, do what they can to not be a burden. But here's your mom expecting white glove service. Lord, I'd have thrown her out when she called me a lazy witch. It's time for them to find a new place to live and some serious boundaries put in place afterward. Whenever I'm a guest at anybody's house, I make sure to tidy up after myself and try not to ask for much. This behavior is kind of appalling. Your mom is way out of line. They are not guests that should be treated like a three or four day visitor. They should be cooking meals, cleaning the house and trying to make you and your husband's lives easier because they are a huge disruption to your life. Tell them if they don't do a 180 and start treating you with respect and appreciation, they are not welcome. The second a guest screams at me in my house, they're out on the street. It could be Christ himself and I'd tell him to get out.